So this video is going to go over how to use truck signs to build a gravel truck. Uh, I found this software last year and uh, it's mainly an axle weight calculator for the different states and bridge law. But uh, it was pretty handy for me to kind of play with the wheelbase and bed size and load replacement just to get my head wrapped around it. You know, I spoke to the builder and, you know, got an idea of what he likes to use and I just wanted to totally understand it. And, you know, this is like 40 or $50 a month, so it was inexpensive for me just to, to have. Uh, they also have a website that goes through how to do everything, uh, very informative. So we'll go ahead and log in and uh, we'll go and build a similar truck to what I have now. So it's going to be a Western Star uh, 4900 SB. Uh, SB is set back axle. There's also set forward. And uh, I'll pause the video and I'll, I'll put in a, a couple different trucks to give you an idea on what the different uh, cab layouts are, how you know short or long they are, and what role that plays in wheelbase and CT. First thing, I'm going to adjust the drive's axle spread to 54 inches. That's what I'm using. And then the CT is going to be uh, 210 inches. And with these trucks, kind of the, the bigger the body, the, the bigger the CT to a certain extent. Um, some people are okay with a lot of tail weight. Um, it really depends on what you're after. You know, uh, you don't want to get too carried away with a wheelbase, but it goes hand in hand to a certain extent on where the wheel placement is and how good the truck handles, um, stuff like that. So CT is cab to trunnion or cab to center of the drives. And, you know, if this truck was a, a bigger cab, this CT at 210 would result in a longer wheelbase. So I'll give you some examples. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is adjust the tail out. Um, so the truck's under 40 feet long, and it's going to be built for you know residential tree service. So I chose air suspension to have a little bit better ride for the driver. You know, a lot of people that build storm trucks use spring suspension because it doesn't ever sag, and you can put anything on it, and it's just a harder ride. Um, you're less likely to you know break uh, an airbag or whatever, or have some downtime. But uh, we wanted some comfort, so. There's the truck. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is add a body to it. So you got a couple different options here. So just put a box on there. And uh, I'm doing a 25 foot box. So it should be around, you know, 70, 75 yards, somewhere around there. And then we notice there's a lot of tail here, 37 inches or so. So on this truck, I'll, I'll put a picture in a second, but it's got big mufflers here. So I'm going to have to move the body back about 10 inches. And you could run smaller mufflers or no mufflers at all to kind of scoot the bed up and get some more yardage. But, you know, we want something that uh, sounds pretty good but not too loud for residential work. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is adjust the payload down to zero. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to adjust the chassis weight up a little bit. Uh, I did weigh my truck, it was just under 21,000 pounds. So by setting these to these uh, amounts, that's where it's at, plus the body. Then the body weight, I'm going to put this up a bit. And depending on your uh, bed size and uh, type of material you use, I've seen the bodies anywhere from, you know, 10,500 pounds to 14,000 pounds or so. You know, some people use more ribs, less ribs, T1, hard ox, A36. So you kind of got to just work with your builder and see, you know, what's going to be right for your application. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the height. Uh, truck should be about, you know, 13, 2, 13, 4, somewhere around there. Uh, the width, I guess we'll do 102. And then I'm going to add an addict. I like an addict because it protects the cab. And it also 
creates shade over the cab, so the AC will work a little bit better, the, the fan may cycle less, you know, and it adds yardage for people that are uh, doing that. So we'll make this six foot, and then we'll do uh, a little bit smaller one. And then you can also adjust the weight. Uh, we're going to guess, we'll say 400 pounds. Not sure where it comes in at, but there's a little attic. Um, some people will go ahead and take the air horns off and make the attic even bigger or make it, you know, stick out the front to over here or whatever. But this truck, again, residential tree work. It doesn't need to be huge. Um, in fact, I could have made it a little bit smaller, maybe a 273 inch wheelbase and a 200 CT just so it turned a little sharper and, you know, still has a, a 24 foot bed. So uh, there's the truck so far. Um, we're going to go ahead and add a loader to it. Um, I emailed Truck Science last year and they were able to add the M13 loader. So if yours isn't listed on the list, then you can uh, email them and they'll add it within a couple days. And let's go ahead and watch the front end weight change a little bit as you move the loader back. So it plays a role on front end weight. But it might not be the end-all, be-all as far as, you know, the wheelbase you're using and how much moving the loader affects that. And you kind of got to put it where it needs to go. So uh, we're getting there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add a uh, tag axle. So I've got that. And then I'm going to make this a low pro tire just because I want the extra clearance and, you know, um, I don't want the tire to scrub around corners or whatever. Uh, I did go with a simple 20K drop axle, non-steer. And there's definitely different ways to look at it. You know, the non-steer is easier to uh, maintain over the long haul. It's a simple device, up or down. You can leave it down and back up, you know, to kind of spread the weight off or something. Or if you're going over an incline, it might help, you know, um, get over it. Some people use steer axles, some states require steer axles in the back, and they definitely have their, their place, but for what I was doing, I just wanted something simple, so I could stay with a 20K drop axle. So we've got that. Um, this is your sill. I'm going to put this at you know, six inches. A lot of guys that build storm trucks use a small sill, and they'll kind of engineer the bed so that the axles can move up and down and not hit the bed. Some of the beds out of the north have a bigger sill plate so that they can go on any truck and uh, the axles will have plenty of room, but you give up a little bit of um, yardage and center of gravity changes slightly. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to add some fuel tanks and some uh, hydraulic tanks and a toolbox. So I'm just kind of roughing this in. So we've got that. Um, call this the uh, fuel tank. I use 25 inch uh, diameter 80 gallon tanks. I got two of them. So we'll put this up about 700 pounds. We're only going to add one right now, but it just gives you an idea. Uh, the next one is going to be a hydraulic tank. And then uh, I'll add a, a toolbox. Um, there's you know 40, 50 inch toolboxes out there. Um, I'm able to get a custom built 60 inch on this one. You kind of can never have enough storage. So do that. And these are just kind of rough measurements, guys. So don't hold me to it. Okay, so. Uh, truck's starting to shape up there. Okay, so uh, we're in the ballpark, you know, 44,000 pounds. Um, important thing to note, people will say their trucks are light and heavy, but you always got to look at each spec. Does it have a 20,000 pound front axle? Does it have a big engine? 
Does it have a double wall frame? What size is the double wall frame? Does it have 40K rears or 46s? Spring or air ride? So all that stuff plays a role. You know, I've seen some gravel trucks with a small engine only weigh 41,000 pounds. You know, or I've seen heavy duty frame, big engine, you know, really heavy duty body that's got uh, different types of metal in it. It weighs 50,000 pounds. So the range usually is, you know, 42 to, you know, 47, depending on who makes the body, what the chassis specs are, how big you went. But it's important to just always look at the details. So we've got our truck there. Um, the next thing I can show you is the turning radius. I'm gonna put the track within, uh, I'm gonna guess 86. And then the wheel cut. Um, most of these 20,000 pound front axles will do 45, 55. So we're just gonna do 45. You could have a you know, better wheel cut, but it's a big truck. It's only gonna turn so sharp before you're scrubbing tires or you know hurting the suspension components or whatever. But this gives you an idea of what the truck's gonna turn like. And if you had, you know, a longer wheelbase, this circle just gets bigger. So there's that. Um, there's the options to look at like your bridge laws for different states, uh, your center of gravity, you know, stuff like that. So we're back to our truck here. And let's say I want to experiment with the wheelbase to see what effect 10 inches would have had. I can plug that in and just look at the front end weight change. So, you know, 600 pounds or so. And I could probably get away with this, you know, because I do have a rear tag axle, you know, and it's got some tail weight, but maybe it's okay. Now, some of these guys that build these trucks will use trailers. So you kind of need to have the axles pretty far back there so that the tag axle isn't overloaded and the truck handles that heavy trailer and, you know, all the weight you're going to put into it. So we'll put this back to 210. And then uh, there is the ability to add a trailer, and we'll see how that looks here. I honestly haven't messed around with this too much. But there you go, and you can adjust the wheelbase on the trailer. Uh, you can add a box template to that. And then, you know, play with your axles to kind of move the weight around a little bit, but um, just gives you an idea of what you can do with this software. So uh, that's about it.